All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and share the links. Yesterday we made a video, but sadly, maybe one or two of you only download the video and look like, and even the video I made it before that, uh, only very few, three people, they download the video or five. Uh, the one about Muhammad being a white supremacist. Uh, <clears throat> as you know, we don't keep, I don't keep my videos on my channel. And when you don't download them, you show that you don't care and you don't support. And if you are a Christian, that's mean you are a Christian by name. So when we see five people only downloading out of tens of thousands subscribed to my channel, that's mean there's only few people really care. So I want to say thank you for not caring for what we do. Otherwise, you will act differently. Today, our topic is... <clears throat> Why Islamic countries, the top happy countries in the world, are Islamic? Now, for sure, this is absolutely fake news. I'm just being sarcastic. I'm being sarcastic. The reality is, it is totally the opposite. Islamic countries is the most unhappy countries in the world. It doesn't matter where you live, even if you live in the wealthy one or the most poor one. The fact does not change that you will not be a happy person. And the reason for that is uh, the missing of a freedom. You know, when you don't have a freedom, your life simply, simply is being oppressed by somebody. <clears throat> As an example, those girls who we see in the stage, if they dance in Saudi Arabia, they are going to be arrested and jailed between 10 to 15 years just for being and doing what they are doing right now. That is Islam, my friend. In case you do not know, playing chess is haram and you can go to jail between three to four years if they want to practice the law on you. In case you do not know, that playing music or listening to music or even uh, playing a, a drum or anything it is the way and the reason to go to hell and today we are going to discuss this all together but before we go there yesterday we made a video it's called why 350 people converted to islam please go and watch it and download the video the Muslims, after the tragic attack in New Zealand, they tried to take advantage of this tragedy to make it uh, work for their propaganda. So they have even news agencies, TV stations, publishing a video saying that people, they converted to Islam after that day. But the reality is, it's false, and they were posting a video from 2007 in Germany, which is, says five German convert to Islam, but yet they claim that those people converted to Islam just yesterday in New Zealand. Let us watch a little bit of the video and then we continue. Now, went viral in social media New Zealand. Okay, it's a true story. The brother. I mean, even tragedy. They try to use it for their sake of the propaganda of Muhammad. People are leaving Islam left and right. And look, the 350, I mean, they don't say like 10, 20, I mean, 350. I mean, why you stop there? Make it 365. I mean, why 350? Why, why, why you made the 350 number? I mean, why, why are you stuck with the 350? And they post all pictures of people we do not know who they are and the news and you know they publish and they say they send everywhere brother 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 a brother true news brother true news <laughs> shaheed sadaki all right so this is what was the video is about you can download it you can just search for the following title and you can download it wherever you find it all right 
three why 350 people converted to Islam in New Zealand after a church you know and you will see how popular this post uh, between Muslims Muslims are posting this everywhere as you see here this is in the front news in Google 50 Muslims killed in New Zealand 350 con accepted Islam it's all over and um, uh, uh, all uh, those uh, they claim themselves to do da'wah to Islam, to invite people to Islam channels. They are posting the same exactly videos. And all those pictures are old and they are false. And they are fake news, as usual. Now we go back to our topic. <clears throat> the top 10 country of happiness. First of all, I mean, you see in the picture here, this is National Geographic website. All right. What do you see in the picture? In Islam, this is haram, and you can be beaten to death for just doing this. You and your wife, or your whatever who she is, and in bicycle, and she is wearing a, sh a short. Actually, the woman she will be raped guaranteed if she do that in Pakistan. Or imagine in Afghanistan or imagine she do that in Somalia or imagine she do that in Saudi Arabia so simple things you do in your life today in those Islamic countries it can cause your death just wearing a short and the funny they say wearing a short is not right because that exposed the woman body but they don't have a problem to have a boy they call him Bacha Bazi dancing for them dressing as a girl and after the party they have sex with the boy but women having short is haram absolutely it's a big sin brother <clears throat> so the top 10 happy countries according to this national geographic by the way i don't believe in articles just to be honest with you uh, i don't think people in uh, as an example the number 10 country happy country is sweden I mean, why? Is that sense because you have a lot of, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, I don't know what to say. I mean, in the last years, you know, Sweden maybe was really the best country to live in before. But now, because of the open policy for immigration and anyone can jump in the country, including people who they can be a rapist, how Sweden can be the most happy country, but it still look like it's it's holding itself to be one of the best. So it is number ten, and then Australia, and then New Zealand, and then Netherlands, and then Canada, and then Finland, and then Norway. Now I guarantee you that those numbers are not really accurate. As an example, I mean, why in why in the world somebody who live in Canada would be the most happy person? Number uh, number what? Number six. Uh, that's not really accurate. Um, it can't be true. However, the point here that none of those countries, which is maybe to be considered the best, and you can have a different opinion about each one of them, is none of them is Islamic. So, what is a secret? Why Islamic countries don't make it to the most happy countries in the world? Let us see some of the reasons. Islam promotes sadness and anger. As an example, <clears throat> if a person, he want to uh, have fun in life, what he do? I mean, have fun without hurting others. What he do? I mean, what we can do? What we as a human have, uh, uh, you know, uh, something uh, right to do, and we can do it without hurting others. It still can, it can be considered as fun. The Quran says that those who spend their time speaking about anything except Islam, they are evil people. They are bad people. And Allah will send them to hell in chapter 31 verse number six it says what does that mean there's people who they 
you know, speak about things which have nothing to do with Allah, just to misguide you. So the second you start talking about art, start talking about the music, start talking about uh, uh, anything, uh, it's not about Allah and Muhammad. Obviously, you are a person who are trying to misguide and mislead people from Allah. Now, somebody might say to me, well, what does this have to do with what you are saying? This is a, this is a metaphorical, have different meaning and have nothing to do with what you, you, you are saying. Well, we have Muhammad to explain to us what does that mean, you know? Uh, like, what Muhammad said about the music, as an example. This is one of the examples of how people, they can mislead you. Uh, I will show you, and I will start from simple stuff. Bill. All of us, we have a bill, either in your phone, either or in your door. Even that is a musical of shaitan. Even that is musical or the, the, the instrument of the devil. So if you are a person who have a bill, just a bill, in your house, you are having the instrument of Satan in your house. And here the list of sadness grow. Angels will not enter a house which there is a small bell or a bell. That's it. You are ugly, you are disgusting, and you are cut off the mercy of Allah. For what? Because you, you do have a bell in your house. Sorry, I you know I'm sorry for you. You have a bell, you are an ugly, evil person. I mean, if you ask yourself, why in the world if I have a bell? This God is upset. I mean, did I kill anybody? Did I do anything wrong? What I did exactly? What having a bill have to do even with God? I mean, what's wrong with this God? So, you know, all of us, like in uh, in the Christmas time, we have always this uh, famous uh, uh, decoration for a christmas like a bell etc like jungle bells jungle bells for muslims jungle bells is the devilish thing there's no jungle bells it is haram it is forbidden it is from the devil brother and that explain why in the christmas time Millions of Muslims, they have Christmas tree inside their houses secretly because they are trying to bring happiness to their life, which is not exist. And I'm very thankful that uh, Muslims don't have uh, uh, an equal person as Santa Claus because Santa Claus in Christianity uh, you know, Santa Claus, by the way, people, they say he's a fake person. The fact is not. He's a real person. You know, many people, they say Santa Claus is fake. This is because they're ignorant. Santa Claus is a real person. And he was a good man, very wonderful man, who spent his life trying to make children happy, not like Muhammad, the child molester. So Santa Claus is not a fiction, as many they start saying, especially atheists uh, with, with their stupidity. Uh, you can go and search his history, his name, where he lived, even the house where he lived in is exist. Uh, Saint Nicholas, yes, he is not a fiction person. So imagine the Muslim, they have someone equal to Santa Claus. What he will have in his back? Bomb, knife, I mean, you name it. And this is what ISIS they did with the children. They start making them or forcing the children to be to do beheading. So if Islam is a religion, forbid even having a bell in the house. The list go and it, it grow. Let us see. What else? Uh, 
here by the way here you see the hypocrite Muhammad he was forbidding the Muslims from dancing forbidding the Muslims from having music forbidding them from being happy but yet he have a bunch of slave black girls dancing for him and singing and when uh, uh, when uh, Abu Bakr he entered the house he shouted at them and he said what the devil instrument is in the house of the prophet <laughs> do you see it Muhammad was saying to the Muslims all his life that the music is haram the music is from the devil the music will take you away from Allah and then Abu Bakr he entered the house of Muhammad he have a bunch of young beautiful girls shaking their asses and dancing for the Prophet and Abu Bakr he said oh this musical instrument of the devil in the house of the messenger of Allah do you see it hmm okay guys just hold on a second I'm I am making yogurt do you know how to make yogurt I will teach you uh, here you will see the hypocrisy of Muhammad slave girls are singing and supposedly the song is about Muhammad being victorious so you can sing about Muhammad Muhammad listening to a song about Muhammad Muhammad singing and listening to a song about him uh, 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 bringing Islam it's fine and girls are singing it's not haram it's not haram even they are not his wives it's okay and they are playing with the drum it's not haram but if you do the same my friend you are in trouble so now the Muslims because of this they say the only song is not haram is the song the Prophet was listening to because the Prophet he listened to it this is the only song is is halal all right If we continue, let us see. Muhammad is speaking badly about the Muslims. And he said that he heard the Prophet saying, from among my people, followers, there will be some of people who will consider illegal sexual intercourse but muhammad all or let us say 90 percent of his sexual intercourse were were illegal how many women he kidnapped how many women he raped how many women he took from their family uh, all of this is legal the girls who they are just in the previous hadith dancing for you, where do you get them from? If you are wearing silk, if you are drinking alcohol, and if you use a musical instrument, you are going to be like the pigs in the judgment day. Look what he said. Allah will destroy them during the night and will let mountain fall on them and he will transform the rest of them into monkeys and pigs uh, and they will remain so still the day of resurrection now here we we have a proof a clear proof that Muhammad is a liar because simply how many people who they are Muslims they are listening to music and Allah did not make them pigs and monkeys Muhammad is threatening that Allah will make you a pig and a monkey if you listen to music if you drink alcohol if you have illegal sexual intercourse so now let us analyze this illegal sexual intercourse is haram but muhammad he allowed muslim 
to have one day or one hour or one night stand or three night stand if you remember Muhammad he said and again it is Muhammad who said not me any man and women they agree to have and the Muslim here they put between two bracket temporarily marriage the fact that this is not a marriage and this is temporarily yes but to care to to hide the shame of the prostitution of the Prophet of Allah they claim that this is marriage since when a marriage can be temporarily since when marriage you hire a woman by paying her money to open her legs and you call that marriage and then you say to her I, I want you to open your legs for me excuse my language for the coming three hours or three days and I will pay you a hundred dollar or ten dollars and if she agree that according to Muhammad or the Muslims they call it marriage the fact in Arabic does not say anywhere the word marriage it says any man any male any female they agree to associate to live together to have boom boom together as you see with me in the screen for those who speak Arabic أيما رجل وامرأة توافقا فعشرة ما بينها بينهما ثلاث ليال فإن حبا أن يتزايدا أو يتتركا تتركا. Any male and female they like to live together, which means have sex for three days. If they like to increase, they can increase. If they like to decrease and and, and let it go, they can. So when Muhammad he says. My people will make it legitimate to have sexual intercourse. He was talking about what? If you can even have a woman, all, you, all what you need to do is just do it according to, to Allah by saying to her, Hey, I want to if you how much you want me to pay you. And the women she say, Okay, we have to do it halal way. Okay, I have to pay me ten dollars. Okay, for how many hours? Uh, four or five hours. Oh, don't you think ten dollars is so expensive for five hours? I don't care. This is business. Take it or leave it. This is halal. So when you hear Muhammad speaking about illegal sexual intercourse, you die laughing and you think this guy is like the rest of the prophet. He is against illegal sexual intercourse. When the guy he promotes everything to be illegal to the point even we have Muslims they say to us in heaven. They will have sex with their mother. Do you, do you remember? How many of you remember? I don't know how many of you actually download the videos, but I guess not many. Uh, let us see. Just to refresh your memory. Just refresh your memory. And you don't see that there's something wrong with that. What do you not understand about nothing is sin? Well, I, sin I, I'm just trying to understand, my friend. You see, I'm not smart like sin. you. We think it's sin due to our social okay. structure. If, if, the, if Zach and Mary, I'm not trying to insult, by the way. Let's go back a little bit to, re, you, to refresh your you mind. You, the you, said, you said this nothing guy is, is a fraud. Sin in heaven. Huh? Nothing is sin in heaven. Thank you very much. That's what I'm saying. In the heaven, you can have sex with the goat. It's fine for you, right? Not nothing sin. There's no nothing sin. You can sin. you yeah. can have sex with your mother. Okay. Yes. Well, okay. So you can you are proud about having sex with your mother. You and your father, you will have sex with the same woman, which is your mother. Anything. Anything is fine. Everything comes from God in heaven. No problem. So in the heaven of Allah, you will have a threesome. You and your father and your mother in the bed. Okay. And you don't see that there's something wrong with that. What do you not understand about nothing is sin? Well, I'm, sin I'm just trying to understand, my friend. You see, sin. I'm not smart like sin. you. We think it's sin due to our social okay. structure. If, if, the, if that can make, I'm not trying to insult, by the way. I'm not trying to. So anyway, why you don't understand there's nothing is sin in heaven? So look at what Muhammad did. Muhammad, he made the Muslims very stressed and he manipulated their mind. Saying to them in the heaven of Allah, you can if your mother, you can if your sister, you can if your grandmother, even you can if Muhammad himself. And actually, later we will speak about, and he said, Yes, so what? Actually, I asked him, 
وات اف وات اف محمد علي كلاي هي ونا هاف سكس ويز يو ذا جاي هي سيد اند يو كان هير هي سيز يس لايك هي واز اكسايتد سو وات محمد ديد هي كورت ذا مايند اوف ذا هيومن بين who supposed him a believer in him in the same time he oppressed the person who don't believe in him but yet he is a born in a muslim family so now if you are a born in a muslim family you have no choice to say i don't accept this because who are you you are just a muslim and you have to obey your opinion is who nobody care for it you are no one you are nothing you are just a abdul and as long you are abdul you just obey so Muhammad here by saying that the one who have sexual intercourse illegally, which means you have to pay a woman, hire her, that will make her legal. If you have a girlfriend without paying her, this is haram. The women, she have to take off her panty when you agree about the payment and for how long. Now the Muslim, they say that later Muhammad, he abrogated this and he forbidden it. But this is will be very strange because we have reference saying that the Muslims they practice that even in the time of Abu Bakr and the Umar al-Khattab, which mean even after the death of Muhammad. Secondly, why he approved something and then he disapprove it later. Number three, the Quran approved it in the chapter four, verse twenty-four. Allah He allowed the Muslims to do the muta as we see it. And then Muhammad continues saying, wearing silk. Okay, you see, wearing silk, I can understand that's a person saying. Oh, this is expensive clothes. Maybe you should uh, give your money to somebody who is poor. But Muhammad, Muhammad, he was living a very wealthy life. And the proof is simple. Muhammad, he have hundreds of slaves, if not thousands. And he have 13 wives. So let us say, Christian Prince, he bought a silky uh, shirt. Expensive one. Let us say it cost him five hundred dollars. By doing that, I go to hell. But a man he have thirteen wives is spending his money on women he do not need, holding women in his house as if they are goats. And yet they claim that he was poor. And every woman she have her servant slaves. They have guards. When you go to the house of the prophet. You have to ask for permission from who? From the guards, the black slaves standing in front of the door. Then Muhammad, he go farther, he says, and drinking alcoholic drink. But Muhammad himself, he used to be drunk at least three to four days a week. So what happened? Not only Muhammad, all the Muslims, they used to be drunk all day long to the point Muslims they go to pray and they are totally drunk to the point Muhammad he had to make a verse claiming that Allah he said this verse asking the Muslims not to come to pray when they are drunk chapter 4 verse number 43 oh you believe don't come to pray when you are a drunken so the apostles of Muhammad they were drunken during the life of Muhammad and they are drunk when they pray and the reason Muhammad he made this verse because people they start laughing to death at the at the believers so they are standing behind the prophet and they are falling apart because all of them they are drunk so muhammad in order to stop this you know humiliation for his religion he did not say to them don't drink and he did not dare because at that time he was weak he don't want them to leave and the same time he himself need to drink and he want to drink muhammad he forbade drinking when he himself got sick and he cannot drink no more if you remember the hadith says that muhammad he died because of a poison he ate in khaybar
and since then Muhammad anything he swallow he vomit and he cannot drink wine it's very harsh in his stomach so Muhammad then he decide to forbid alcohol the other Muslim they might try to say oh this is no it happened before I, I, I don't think so Muhammad was a drunk person and the Muslims are a drunk people during his lifetime and actually there's many hadith speaking about Muhammad even he was teaching the Muslims how to make wine and you see here the Muslims they try to hide uh, the uh, 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 what they are drinking here it says can a yumbadu nabith nabith is a wine you see it Ibn Abbas narrated risins used to be soaked for the messenger The fact here what they are saying that they use to make from the grape uh, wine for the messenger and he shrink he drink it he drink it look here what I mean the translation look here if you read it doesn't say anywhere about the water here they add they say it in a water skin yeah okay this is a water skin but there's no water there so what is inside they hold the grape inside and in the heat is going to turn and you know the the, the you know i don't know if you saw those things like which is made from uh, uh, leather uh, where you can hold water inside it usually when you travel so what they do is the same they use even to hold milk inside they can hold any liquid inside so they hold inside the grape and then the grape because of the heat as a normal process will turn into alcohol and Muhammad he used to drink it almost every day and uh, uh, actually there's many hadith uh, there's videos actually uh, there's videos by Muslims I can search for it in YouTube but it's in Arabic where the Muslim scholars agree that the Prophet used to drink. See, all those videos are talking about the Prophet drinking alcohol. Those are scholars, very well known uh, uh, people. And not only he used to drink wine, actually, the Prophet he used even to do ablution with wine. You believe it? Uh, <clears throat> Let me see if I can find this some hadith. We were with the Prophet and he asked something to drink. A man from the company uh, uh, here it says supposedly the prophet he don't want to drink should we not give you a drink nabith which means alcohol nabith is simply is wine drink made from date to drink this is between two brackets the fact nabith is maybe is made from date maybe is made from a grape it doesn't matter at the end of the day it's wine shouldn't we give you nabith he replied yes the man went to quickly and brought a cup of nabith the messenger of Allah said uh, uh, and peace be upon him he said why didn't you cover it up even by putting a piece of wood on it Muhammad was teaching the man how to make it uh, let us see different hadith hmm
while he was at the uh, rock uh, the corner like uh, you know I saw a man bringing a cup to the messenger of Allah and it was inside there was Nabi and he gave the cup and he raised it to his mouth but he found it to be so strong to be strong so he gave it back to the man among them and the people of messenger says uh, is it unlawful or oh, messenger is it unlawful he said bring it bring the man to me so he was brought to him he took the cup from him and called for water and then he poured into the cup which he's raised to his mouth and he frowned then he called for more water and he poured in into it so simply what muhammad saying if the wine is strong break it with some water <laughs> And the funny here, you will see the Muslims, they they are not translating the word nabith. You see here, did you notice here? I mean, why the Muslim did not translate the word nabith? Because they don't want you to show you that this is nothing but wine. What the point of translating the whole story, but you don't translate the word nabith? Why you keep it nabith? I mean, what is equal to this? There's no equal word for it. Uh, let us see different actually there's many uh, we can like there's many many other books actually but we prefer to show from the most uh, 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 accepted books for the Muslim uh, um, Let us see this one. On the night of the genie, the messenger of Allah said to him, Do you have water for ablution? He said, No, I have nothing but Nabil. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh boy so Muhammad he did abolition with Nabi and here look at the translation how they try to uh, uh, to to fabricate and they say here look uh, ie there is no harm from mixing the two and they says he good deeds and pure water he said good deed and pure water uh, hearing to ask yourself why Muhammad is doing abolition with the wine if the wine is haram I mean why even they have they have no water but they have wine oh, we can find tons of other stories and actually I wish I can play for you uh, the video where Muslims speak about the Prophet because whatever I say the Muslim they will say this guy is lying uh, let us see a different one Hmm. Okay, look like this one. It's not in this website. Let us see. Anyway, even the Quran, I mean, why want to waste our time with the hadith? Even the Quran, Allah He claimed that Nabid and wine and alcohol is a miracle from Allah. Uh
here you see the Muslims they don't really say clearly what this drink is but the fact it is Nabi it is um, uh, what, what the Quran is saying that Allah he made for you from the date fruits and from the gra uh, grape a drink which is alcohol as a sign and the miracle from Allah so this is a, one of the miracles of Allah let us change the translations to see if one of them can come be to be honest and he say clearly that this is alcohol yeah see until now we did not find one translation saying the truth because in Arabic it says sakaran not only it's alcohol a drunken it will make you drunk it's a miracle of Allah uh, let us see uh, let us see Sahih International see here the things is getting better a little bit so the Quran praising alcohol and saying it is a sign from Allah and indeed that is a sign for people who reasons so if you want to reason with Allah you have to look at the wine how it make you drunk because this is a sign from Allah and Allah he says from that alcohol a good provision indeed there but later when Muhammad he got sick and he can drink suddenly he claimed in different verse in the Quran that wine is the maid of shaitan wine uh, maid of shaitan uh, folks don't use bad language in Arabic otherwise I will I will block you Fox 400 don't use a bad language anyone will use a bad language in the chat I don't care who you are you are a Muslim you are a Christian you are a Hindu you are a Buddha I will ban you so this time we give you time out next time we ban you you can speak your mind, but don't use bad language. Not even against Muhammad. Don't say the F word. Don't say anything like that. Because that will not make a point. Here we are here to teach, not to call names. So now we go back. What is else can make us happy? You cannot have alcohol. You cannot have a music. And if you do that, Allah will make you a pig and a monkey, as Muhammad, he said, in the judgment day. Actually, not in the judgment day, right away. In the night, you drink it, and the night Allah will come to you, and he will let the mountain fall on you, and he will make you a pig and a monkey. Allah will destroy them during the night. So if you play with some music, at night Allah will come and he will destroy you during the night. So now, I cannot play music. I cannot have party I cannot sing what I can do maybe I can play chess finally we found something it is not haram what about playing chess is playing chess is haram in Islam the answer yes even chess is haram If you play chess you are committing a big sin and Allah will punish you badly if you play any game any game is the same as putting your hands on the blood of a pig to Muhammad do you see it because all games are forbidden and actually all Muslim scholars they agree that this is a game that's totally forbidden 
and any actually any the any game any game Muhammad he allowed Muslims only to do things teach your children to ride horses to shoot uh, uh, and Quran why those they need it are because they want to do jihad that's it that's it so what we have left in our life to be happy if you live in Saudi Arabia and you go out in the street where everything is haram forbidden I cannot buy a guitar to play a guitar when I'm home I cannot play music when I am home I cannot play a game when I am home so what I do during my lifetime Muhammad he wanted to be sure that you as a Muslim you will be only subdued to him and the excuse is Allah but we showed you how Muhammad he have slaves girls dancing for him and they are having party at the house and Abu Bakr he said huh the instrument of shaitan in the house of the Prophet even having a bell is haram what about even having a picture what about if you want to be an artist If you are an artist and you want to draw a picture Allah will bring you in the judgment day and he will say to you okay here we go this is the picture you draw I want you to make it alive <laughs> and he will order you to breathe into it to give it life read carefully what Muhammad he said This is not me. Actually, let us see uh, a more clear hadith from this one. The Messenger of Allah said, Whoever make an image, he will be punished until he is commanded to breathe a soul into it, and he will not be able to do so. You see, all of those are about against images. Now, you see, uh, having an image of to worship, I can understand. But why, if I make an image, it is haram? And by the way, Muslim today are hypocrites. <coughs> Excuse me, they are not following the Prophet, because how many of how many Muslims they have a phone? The phone you have in your hand is nothing but images. Computer is nothing but images. Even if you don't open images, by the way. Because if, as an example, if you have window or if you have Mac or whatever you have, icons is images. Icon is an image. How many Muslims they have TVs? All the Muslims have TV. But in fact, TV is haram. Because TV is nothing but endless images broadcasted from somewhere some of it is for living being and some of it for draw or art so now if you are a muslim and sitting at home and then you turn your tv and then uh, even the music for the news like da -da 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 -da, news this is haram so you are being a hypocrite so now what is left for a muslim to do in his life music is haram Bell is haram. A drawing is haram. Uh, singing is haram. Chess is haram. So what we will do? What exactly we can do? We go and we join jihad because our life became so depressed and I want to kill myself so I can go to happiness where heaven have wine river milk river honey river 
and a lot of very, very beautiful women, and they are naked. We have a person, his name is Ison. He said, after listening to you for five months, I now I accept Jesus. Glory to the Lord, my friend. I don't know why Google restricted your message. This guy, he just said, I accepted Jesus, and Google restricted his message. You see, uh, Ason, Ason, Ason one. He said, after listening to you for five months, and now the message is re uh, uh, retracted. I don't know why is that. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Well, we are good for you, my, good for you, my friend, and we are happy for you that you you accepted the Messiah. And uh, we pray that the Lord will open your eyes for better and for the best for you and your family and people around you. Uh, if you look at this, you will see that Muhammad is trying to bring nothing but depression in the life of Muslims. So that their life became in what now? Focus in what? Even poetry, by the way, is haram. Poetry is haram. The Arab they used to do something is called Sajah. What is Sajah? Sajah simply is Quran, the same as Quran, but it's better quality. But since Muhammad, he started doing Sajah. He forbid the Arab from doing Sajah. You see here, by the way, the Muslims, they give a false translation for their hadith. This guy, he's saying, this guy, he is from Ikhwanul Innama Hadha Min Ikhwanul Kuhan. Muhammad, Muhammad, he acknowledged that there is people who they call them the monks, who they speak in Saja. In, in English here, they give it definition, this word. Muhammad, he was uh, in love with this kind of a speech, which is the same as rap music, you know, rap songs. Uh, but look here, what this hadith is saying. The Muslim, they say to us that nobody spoke Quran like Muhammad. But look what Muhammad, what the Muslim says, and what people, they say about Muhammad. Thereupon, Allah Messenger said, he was talking saja phrases like the saja of the desert Arab. This is exactly the Quran. But in a, it's a bad version of it, very bad quality. So now what we will do as Muslims? What and how we can be happy? The 10 happy countries in the world, none of them is Islamic. And actually, those countries, the good news is, the more number of Islamic people will be there, those countries will lose happiness. Attack in a Christmas market, attack in etc., attack in, a, you know, you just name it. Just wait for what's coming. Already, it's happening for the last 20 years. And we pray that people who they are happy, they will stay happy. It doesn't matter which country they are from, which ethnic, what color. But this is not the point. The point is, Islam is meant to oppress a human being. So he go mad and he start doing what is wrong. Do you ask yourself why somebody want to drive a truck full of TNT or S4, C4, and he wanna 
uh, explode himself? What is the purpose of that? I mean, why you do that? Because Muhammad, he, he made the Muslims hate their life because there's nothing left. What he can do? Everything is forbidden. Music is forbidden. Games is forgiven, for, for, forbidden. Chess is forbidden. Singing is forbidden. Playing it, anything is it's forbidden. By the way, football is forbidden in Islam. You see, in Saudi Arabia now they are doing football. This is haram. This is not Islamic. So what a Muslim? What what a, will make a Muslim uh, happy? Nothing. So your life became in what? Eating and having sex with your wife or sex slave. That's it. That's your life. You can do nothing. You know, uh, there's a there's an Ara uh, Arabian uh, uh, series to make fun of how, how we Arab live in the Middle East. There's a guy, he went with his family to picnic. You know, picnic, like let's have fun. It's, it's not haram in Islam to have picnic with your family. You can. But it's haram that people they can see your women. So what we would do? He took them to picnic. And let me let me draw this for you so you can understand what I'm saying. I have to use now my uh, specific uh, skills of art, as you know. So imagine you go with your wife. Here we have a river. Okay, this is a river. And now you and your wife are going to sit next to the river but around the river there's people too and you sit here with your family this is your wife this is you you this is your kid this is your daughter now because it's haram people to see me so i i put a sheet in this side And then there's people they stop here oh they can see us so we put a sheet in this side when i say sheet i'm saying like a curtain you know like a curtain and then there's oh a guy and his family they sit here they can see us so i put a curtain in this side and then there's guy he is from the other side of the river with his family they are sitting here so i put a curtain in this side so why i'm going to picnic What kind of a picnic this picnic is? I have four curtains around my spot. I see nothing because it's haram. I remember once I was, I, I think this was in Philippines. I was in the beach. You, you know, when I swim, I, I take a spot where there's nobody really. I, I stay away from people. So I was like in a spot which is almost empty. And then suddenly Abdul and his wife, she is wearing jalabiya, you know, like, you know, the clothes which is uh, wide. And they jump in the water and they were walking and he got close to me. And then he says to me, keep a distance, keep a distance. I said, hey, Abdul, I am here before you. If you want to stay alone, why you came here? I am here before you. You keep a distance, you go. I mean, look how rude. He came to my spot and now he's asking me to keep a distance. I said, no, you keep a distance. I am here before you. Don't you see me? I'm here. If you don't like anyone to see you with your wife, go and go to a different place. Go to an island. There's nobody in it. He screamed. He screamed at his wife. The coward did not even dare to, to answer me. He screamed at his wife. He said, get out, get out. And he came out with his wife. And you should see his wife. Her body is all the details is showing because she is not wearing anything underneath. And when you wear wide clothes and it is thin, you know what will happen when you get out of the water, right? You know what I mean? The details of her private part is all over. I mean, you can see every, you can see her nipples coming out. But now she is wearing jalebi. She is not wearing a swimming suit. So what we can do in our life if we are a Muslim to be happy we go to the mosque the mosque teach us that we have to fight the Christians and the Jews 
We have to fight the Hindus. They are kuffar. We need to fight the Buddhas. Allahu Akbar. The atheist. Allahu Akbar. I mean, everybody is an enemy. The Quran says in chapter 5, actually many, many verses, uh, but as an example, chapter 5, uh, verse 151, uh, take not Christians and Jews as a friends. And not only the Jews, by the way, not only the Christian Allah, he said in chapter 5, verse 14, that Allah will spread hatred between them. Because usually I mention this only because I am a Christian, but Allah, he mentioned that to the Jews, that Allah will spread hatred between the Jews. In chapter 5, verse number 64. So the God of Islam, he is consistent with his hatred, not with love. He wants to spread love. The same he do say about the Christians. If you go to chapter 5, verse 14, it says exactly the same. Allah, he want to spread hatred and enmity between the Christians until the day of resurrection. So now we have a good idea why a Muslim person is not a happy person because what is left for him to live for? What is left? This is about the Jews. We have placed enmity and hatred. Among them, we have placed enmity and hatred. Who is talking? Allah. Among who? The Jews. And the and the and the and the, uh, the American. They are wondering this Somalian women who became a, a Congress uh, women because of the stupid Democratic Party in USA, as usual, the left, uh, why she is anti-Jews. Well, you don't know why. I mean, they're having discussion in the Congress. She said, she said, she said, but the fact, it's not her who said, it is Muhammad, he said. Among them, Allah saying, we have placed enmity and hatred Till the day of resurrection. And Muhammad, he said the same about, about the Christians. Allah, he will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians until the judgment day. From those who call themselves Christians. We did take a covenant, but they forgot a good part of the message that we send them. So we string them with enmity and hatred. So we understand now that Islam is religion who promote hatred and enmity. And how enmity and hatred can bring happiness to the life of a person who is full of hate. It's impossible. Do we agree? A person who live by hate and for hate, he is the first unhappy person. Yes, you can harm others. Yes, you can kill others and you make them unhappy too. But at the end of the day, you are the first one who suffer from your hatred. You have no good in your life. You go to the mosque. You go to the mosque. You find people coming from the mosque, their faces as if they are just coming out of the grave. Why? Because the speech was teaching nothing but hate. The Christians, Allahu Akbar, they are insulting the Prophet. How dare to insult the Prophet? We showed you just two days ago in, in, the, in the video I made about Muhammad and Allah was a white supremacist. How if you say anything against the Prophet, you should be killed. Which means you as a Muslim, you should not be happy if somebody insult the Prophet to the point you, you are willing to kill and you have to kill. Killing is a lifestyle in Islam is not a temporary thing. A person who is a scholar who he said that the Quran was created, the Muslims they slaughter him in the Adha day. 
in the Eid, in the holy day. Big scholar in the history of Islam. The Caliphate, he brought him to the mosque, and he said, usually we slaughter a sheep, today we are going to slaughter this idiot who said the Quran is created. And when he slaughtered him like a sheep in the middle of the mosque, all the believers start rejoicing. This is how the Muslims, according to Allah, rejoice. And actually the Quran confirmed that. How a Muslim he will be rejoiced? Read carefully with me. We don't say things without proof. Chapter 9, verse number 14, says it clearly, that Allah said, kill them. Kill them. Allah will torture them by your hearts, by your hands. By the way, it doesn't say punish them. This is a false translation. It says torture them. Allah will torture them by your hands and cover them with shame. And that will heal the breast of the believers. So how a believer will be comfort? By torturing, not punishing, as they claim, claim here in the, in, the, in the translation. By torturing, that will make your breast healed. Change the translator. Still, they are saying punishing. <coughs> it's not true. It doesn't say punish. It says torture. See here the the translation change. <coughs> and then, in the verse after it, the Quran confirm it again. He says, Allah will remove the rag within your heart. Allah will remove what? The 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 anger. By, by what? By killing a human being. The only way in Islam to be uh, uh, anger-free is to slaughter somebody and that will make you happy. Do you see it? I'm not making things up. This is the Quran in front of you. Chapter 9, verse number 14. Verse number 15. So, if you now understand or you have an idea why a Muslim person is always an angry person, you have to know that Islam brings nothing but anger. Somebody, he made a cartoon, millions of people want to kill. Immediately. And the funny, uh, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, she was playing Quran in her parliament when they opened uh, uh, the speech, uh, just to show support for the victims. Me, myself, you know, I feel sorry for those victims, but playing Quran, which is the, the root of the problem, is a stupid thing. I mean, do you know even what he is reading for you in the Quran? What he was reading for you? Don't think that those who they are murdered for the sake of Allah, they are dead. But he's talking about killing the infidels in the same verse, same chapter. Western people are ignorant, generally speaking, when it's come to the culture of Islam. It's good to be terrorist, but it's not right to be stupid. Imagine you bring somebody to recite Quran for you because you want to show him that you love him. But in the Quran, he's reciting, he says, I hate you, I want to kill you. I mean, how silly, how stupid that is. What people do not understand, that the problem is not really in a terrorist attack. The problem is how and why people become into terrorism. Fight the Christians and the Jews and kill them. Chapter 9, verse number 29. Unless they convert to Islam or they pay you jizya, money to live. Pay or die. Western people, they have funny mentality. And, you know, uh, uh, since I came to the state, 
you know when I was living in the Middle East uh, I always thought about Western as uh, they are really smart people I mean come on look at America look at England look at uh, France I mean look at the civilization they have I mean there's no way those people are smart and then when I moved to the West I noticed that Western people are totally ignorant yes maybe they have a good working system maybe they have a good way to do business maybe they have good roads and they have good engineering and they have good structures uh, they, they were advanced in many things but when it's come to know history and religion they are totally ignorant people I remember once a Western guy he sat next to me I was drinking coffee in a coffee shop and I was reading my phone in Arabic I think something like that I don't know what what I was doing so he noticed I am like you know obviously this guy maybe he's an Arab so suddenly he started talking about uh, about Islam he, he is the one who opened the topic and uh, he said to me you know as an example there's many ignorant people me myself I read the Quran from the first page to the last page and I saw nothing in the Quran teaching violence I look at this idiot with the blue eyes and I was saying to myself what I should say to this idiot say to him you are stupid use the term I use when I speak to people in the chat room and then I said to him uh, so you did read the whole Quran he said yeah the whole Quran from the first page trust me trust me I did read it carefully from the first page to the last page I said are you sure he said yeah I'm not kidding with you I'm telling you and I said well I don't think this is right I mean the first page in the Quran is insulting the Christians and the Jews he said no he said yeah and then you know after that we have a conversation I start showing him in my phone he said I don't know the Quran I did read I have nothing of this and I said to him, I think you did not read the Quran, really. I mean, you are just copying what some people say. I said, I'm not lying to you. I said, well, obviously, there's no way you did read the Quran and you did not see this. He did read the Quran and he never saw verses increasing or encouraging killing and harming Christians and Jews and non-Muslims. Never, never. Islam is, Islam is peace. right no he is just an ignorant guy he's not he's, he's not Muslim he's not a Muslim he's just an ignorant uh, my friend go right now in the street and ask people about Islam you will see tons of of those American I speak about American they have no idea I have a neighbor I have a neighbor you know he uh, uh, we took his truck to go to Home Depot uh, to get some stuff and then uh, uh, suddenly they were saying something in the news about you know and then he said uh, I said to, uh, he said to me uh, we, they were talking about Osama bin Laden at that time and then I said well he's a Muslim he said Osama bin Laden is a Muslim imagine after 10 years of 9-11 my neighbor he did not know that Osama bin Laden is a Muslim welcome to America The guy he was shocked. You really some of that is a Muslim? I said, uh, no, I think he's a Hindu. This is America, my friend. And I'm sure you will find the same in Europe. And I believe even in Europe is even more ignorant about what Islam is about. The second you start speaking against Islam, they start right away. They say to you, Islamophobia is you know all this garbage. Islamophobia is a term. To silence the one who speaks the truth. The fact the one who have a phobia is Islam. Why we don't speak about uh, Hindus? You know, Hindus are not, I don't agree with the Hindus. I'm a Christian. What's what's why the problem is Islam? Because if you go on right now and count the last 30 days terrorist attacks, you will find that all is involved Islam. Like 
after a, a year or two finally there's a guy who is doing a terrorist attack he is not a Muslim but out of thousands and thousands of attacks all done by Islamic believers nobody count them to the point nobody condemn terrorist attack no more because simply it's normal to hear that a Muslim attack somewhere it's like it's like a daily news Just last month, almost we have a nuclear weapon war between India and Pakistan because of terrorists. Indian was attacked by Muslim terrorists from Pakistan. This is the truth. I mean, why nobody want to say see the truth? They attack police station and they slaughter more than thirty to forty Indian soldiers by knives. And after they kill them. They they cut they, they start uh, like uh, 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 cutting their limbs. They say to you about uh, what what this country is called the, the one in Asia, I forgot the name. The Muslim there they call them the Ronga something like this. Even that is not a true. It was the Muslims who established an army to kill the Buddhas and to 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 take them out of the land. But this is not even their land. They, they themselves, they are a, a refugee. In Burma, yeah. And I remember I made a video, if you remember, uh, uh, the Muslims, they publish a, a, a picture about a woman. She, she is dead and she have a child in her chest. Anyone remember the video I made it? Allahu Akbar, the Buddha's people, the arcane Muslim women, Allahu Akbar. And later we found that this picture is taken from an Indian movie. Yeah, many more, many more. Yeah. Many more, many more. Yeah, not, uh, not Burma. I think it's a name, right? It's the same. Myanmar is Burma is the same. It's like different uh, new name. Maybe it's the same, I think. So anyway. Uh... And exactly the same happened yesterday. Yesterday, the Muslims they published this uh, videos in their agent in, in their news TV that 350 people converted to Islam after the attack in nine in in, uh, in New Zealand. And then we find that this video was taken from an old video 2007 from Germany, and the title of the video saying that five people converted to Islam. Five people converted to Islam. You know? it's all over Islamic news if you search right now let me do it in the front of you 350 people converted to Islam in a New Zealand huh. I will click search Google oh now my now my video is appearing let us see yeah this is the video in the in the uh, in the Urdu language. I think uh, yesterday it was top news where 350 people converted to Islam. And people they start getting them busted. Fifty Muslims were killed on Friday. In New Zealand, and the 350 people converted to Islam, Kashmir. You click in the link, the page is not found. They took it off because we got them busted. I will not be surprised, by the way, if a Christian prince one day he die, and the Muslim they make videos says a Christian prince before he died he put his finger in his nose and he said allahu akbar and he converted to islam just wait hmm? it's happening you die they say this guy after you die they say he converted to islam i mean i never saw a cult full of lies as much as this cult This is why I should not die. No, actually, uh, I, I love to die. You see, honestly, sometimes if I say to you, you will not believe it. I made a prayer to the Lord saying to, to him, please, Lord, may, make my life short. 
and maybe for you you might maybe not understand why someone like me saying please Lord make my life short you see when you are when you are an idiot you can live uh, you don't care I mean what's happening around you you know what I mean uh, when you are a person who can turn your brain off and you don't think about except like food watching a movie um, you know I mean normal stuff your life is is more relaxed uh, for me the world is disgusting I don't think really I don't see I don't see good around me so why I want to stay and uh, I want to live long but for sure I'm not going to do what the Muslim do commit suicide or you know but for me I pray and I pray in front of you to the Lord to make my life shorter because what the point of this earth I did my part I spent years and years teaching people who want to listen they can listen but if you look around you I mean this earth is disgusting what is right is wrong and what's wrong is right so why we are holding ourselves into this life when this life really nothing good about it around us you open your TV what do you see in TV I mean even TVs are disgusting either disgusting or stupid I mean the most popular movies these days is a Pat man I mean are you fooling yourself or you're stupid or what a guy he jumped from a building to building a spider-man I mean a human being became so bored to the point he have no idea what he's trying to find in his life spider-man a guy he hold himself with a spider uh, silk even Muhammad did not come with this idea so why we love at Muhammad when he fly in the top of uh, to the, to the sky with the uh, with the mule you watch TV news I mean the news is stupid the criminal is a is a is a victim and the victim is a criminal you open Fox News Fox News is insulting Democrat Democrat is insulting the public and the same boring stupid stuff the Democrat they want to be all America to be uh, hipless hippie uh, have sex with everybody drugs everywhere and the, I mean it's the same stupid thing human being is really corrupt and he became a very disgusting creature so why we are so much in hold with life to the point as if we are living in heaven this is not heaven this is not heaven this is why maybe some of you might find it strange that I me I pray I pray to the Lord in front of you to make my life short I don't care really if I die immediately right now as long as I'm a believer my friend and I believe that there's a place for me with the Lord with the Messiah why I want to care for this earth but for sure we are against committing suicide or doing something harm I'm not I'm not speaking in a negative way I'm speaking about reality a person who don't care for what's happening around him he would have a you know he will be relaxed for me I go to bed to sleep my brain is functioning is running 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 I try to turn it off I can't control it Uh, this is why sometimes foolishness you know, a foolish person he can be a happier person good to be foolish sometime isn't it yeah anyway <clears throat> Yeah, people who get uh, get hurt most is people who care most. That's absolutely true. Because if you don't care, I mean, whatever happened to your neighbor next door, you know, who care, right? So you you know, you you still enjoy what you do. But uh, at the end of the day, if you are a person of equality, you cannot lower your equality. This is how you are. This is how you 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 are made. We should care for everybody I care for Muslims too I wish all Muslims to live in peace and to have nice life why not they are a human like us because at the end of the day love and peace will return to all of us you see if Muslims they learn the value of peace and love then they will not think of harming someone as a Muslim so the benefit is for all mankind It's not only for the Muslim if some if we can convince somebody 
to believe in the value of peace and to be civil you see you don't have to agree with the Christian Prince you don't you you, you have the right to be upset from a Christian Prince saying something about your prophet but why you want to kill answer him refute him people they say the effort to Jesus every day no Christian saying I'm going to kill you for saying that yet Jesus for us is not a prophet is God You look at the comment you see how funny the comment of people they say so someone says Jesus is a Muslim why he was a child molester if Jesus was a Muslim why he did not slaughter people why he did not uh, have sex with a child why he did not say beat your wife why he said the man he have to give himself to his wife the same as Christ he gave himself to the church so when somebody says Jesus was a Muslim, that is that is that is an insult to yourself first, for you are being stupid. Why Jesus? He kisses stones. Jesus, he ordered theft and rape. Jesus, he uh, allowed us to lie. Isn't it Jesus who said either you say nay nay or nay yay, yay? Which means even even oath is not allowed. Jesus the one who said love your enemy. How Jesus can be Muslim? Muhammad he says kill anyone. Kill the one who insult the prophet. Uh, Anun die. Arabian prophet, please say the following prayer just before going to sleep. Father, into into your hand, I entrust my spirit. It is night prayer from the Old Testament. You will have a good sleep. Thank you, my friend Anun Dai. Actually, I appreciate this gentleman, uh, Anun, because uh, actually he is always he support uh, he support us and um, by donation. So I really. I mean, this guy, he don't hesitate always to, to support. And I appreciate all those people who support us. Your support is really needed. And uh, thank you, Kyrgyzstan, Jakovic. Usually, by the way, forgive me for not saying thank you for those who give donations, because I know that you don't really, you are not looking for me to say that. But for sure, absolutely, we appreciate your help. Uh, Actually, I have a plan this coming year to move from where I am because the winter here is killing me and that need a big budget to move. So I pray that the Lord will provide and I will be able to go out of here. Uh, last this this winter, we witnessed minus 36. And, you know, staying inside indoors for six months is really horrible. It's not healthy. It's not good. Especially for someone like me, I mean, I don't go out. You know, maybe people like you who go and have normal life. My, my, you know, my life is between my books, my videos, etc. So sitting behind the computer and then you stay six months, you don't see even the sun. It's not really good. So I pray that the Lord will provide and I will be able to move out where I can, where I'm, where I am now, to a place where it's warmer, where I can see the sun at least. I mean, at least see the sun every day. I mean, that's that's not much, right? <laughs> Come to Sweden. I thought Sweden is very cold too. Is it better? I, I, uh, as I know, Sweden is not Hawaii, my friend. Come to Germany. Refugees are welcome, I know. Yeah. Uh, don't say where you want to move. Don't worry. Yeah, if I go to Indonesia, I think I will be arrested after the, the first two seconds I, I land in the airport. Especially Indonesian newspapers start talking about me now. And my name became very, very much popular in that country. So I, I can guess how many... Uh, uh, in, uh, for I'm not, sure, uh, I'm not saying Indonesian people, they are going to harm me. But I'm saying Indonesia is an Islamic country. And there is a lot of terrorist groups there. Yeah. 
I love Serbia. I love the Serbian people. You see, uh, I always respect those people. Serbian people are one of the best ever. You can, you, you know, uh, for sure, like everywhere, there's bad and good. But Serbian people are wonderful people. And look what happened to them. Look what the West did to the Serbian. The West took the side of Al-Qaeda, fought side by side with the terrorist against the Serbian, and they took Kosovo, the heart of Serbia, from the Serbian. And I pray that time will come and the Serbian people will take their land back. Because, you see, people, people are ignorant about history and people don't want to tell you the truth. The first king of the Serbian, he was from Kosovo. This is what Kosovo is for the Serbian. This is not a town. This is not those the Muslims, they are the one who occupy Kosovo. This is not their land. If you don't believe me, go and read history. And this is why I said a person like me, he suffer because I see that the whole world is turning things upside down. I mean, look, the, the victims, they made them a criminals. Erdogan is making his speeches about he will teach the killer in New Zealand. He will punish him as if he is the king of this earth. But Erdogan, he killed millions of Muslims in Syria. He killed millions. His 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 country, the Ottoman Empire, they killed even 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 the, the Turkey itself is not their land. And yet he speak about ethic. Criminals are the most people who speak about ethic, but they don't have it. Erdogan, he made a speech saying that the West is waging war in Islam just to gain some votes in the election. He is a very devilish man. So they kill you and then they go in your funeral and they claim that they are the victim. Syria is burned. The whole country is burned because of this filthy man Erdogan. And until now he is protecting Al-Qaeda in the north of Syria. No, Erdogan is not losing his mind, my friend. He is he's a very smart person. He's a very smart person. He knew how to drive the crowd, the Muslims. The Muslims, they love, hate is, you know, the Muslims who they are supporting him, especially. I'm not saying all Turkish, because not all Turkish are Muslims. Do you remember just a few days ago, we made a video about women who marched by hundreds of thousands in Istanbul? Do you remember what they did when they heard the Adhan prayer? Who remember what the women did? If you search right now in the news, Erdogan was attacking those women for disrespecting Islam. So mistakenly, people think that every Turkish is a Muslim. That's not true. Let me find the video. Erdogan, if you look with me here in the news, Erdogan, he accuses women march of disrespecting Islam, and absolutely they did respect Islam. The second they heard the Adhan, they start whistling and shouting because they don't want to hear it. Hundreds of thousands of women, Turkish women. So who is the Muslim in Turkey? But this is what happened in Turkey. The second Islamic party took a place or took the office. They will never leave until you have a revolution. Count my words and you will see Erdogan will never go. Will never go. Unless they drag him out of the office. Islamists, when they take an office, they never leave. They corrupt the election. They corrupt the country. And they changed the constitution to make it fit with their new party. 
and this is what they do everywhere Erdogan when he signed to establish a party he signed a paper saying my party have nothing to do with religion and right after he won the election he kicked all those who are not religious and he switched the country upside down overnight so now the liberals in Turkey the only way for them to take Turkey back and count my words is revolution no election because they will cor always he will corrupt them no matter what you do even if Turkey bankrupt Erdogan will win the election because Islamists are corrupt people who corrupt elections they don't believe in election anyway You see, the Muslim Brotherhood, the same party of Erdogan, they win the election in Egypt. If the Egyptian did not take them 30 million, they march in the street and they, they drove the Muslim Brotherhood out of government. If that did not happen, the Muslim Brotherhood, they if they were successful to stay there for five years only, that's it. Egypt is going to be a Muslim Brotherhood for the coming 100 year unless you make a revolution. The same exactly in Iran. In Iran, they say to you there's election for president but what but people do not know that the mullahs they have to decide who is the one can go for election which means to be a president which mean uh we have this guy and this guy and this guy they want to go to be for election uh, i am citizen i am iranian i want to be a president it's not up to you the mullahs they have to approve you first before you can be your name to be in the in the in the election box so at the end of the day, they are deciding in pre pre decision who is the one is going to be the president. There's no election. He have to be Islamist. He have to be a terrorist like the mullahs, and he have to agree with everything they believe, and he have to be part of the Hezbollah party. Uh, David Kenwood, ISIS is not gone. Absolutely, ISIS. ISIS is not gone and, and never gone. Actually, ISIS is the, is Muhammad. Muhammad is the founder of ISIS. So what ISIS is gone? ISIS is Islamic State. You know, even they switched, they changed the name from Islamic State to ISIS to avoid saying Islamic State. But the fact it is Islamic State. Muhammad is the founder of the Islamic State. As long there is Muslims, there is is going to be. They will try always to have Islamic State. Same, same. Doesn't matter. Militia doesn't doesn't matter which country. The second Muslims they they come into government, you cannot take them off unless you do have a revolution, and that will cause a lot of a bloodshed. Sadly, and the funny Erdogan always he gives speeches about what's right and what's wrong. When he is the most corrupt man, his son he became a billionaire, and his 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 son-in-law too. From, from the oil they stole from Syria. All the manufacturers which was in the north of Syria, all the machines, all the cars, all the trucks, the whole city smuggled into Turkey. Imagine Turkey was getting the oil barrel from ISIS for $4. $4 only. The price is sixty dollars. The Turkish they get it for four dollars. This is who is Erdogan. And Erdogan, he is the same as a worm in the belly of Europe. He threatened them. He forced them to pay him to pay. You know, he's like a, it's a mafia guy. You know, if you don't pay me, I'm going to open my borders for refugee will flood you. And now Europe, they have to bribe Erdogan with billions and trillions of dollars. Actually, country now is surviving, uh, uh, Turkey is surviving by the money, is given by the European for the purpose of the refugee. Erdogan, he spent 1% and he take the rest for his pocket to survive. But by the way, those people, they are very helpful. And I will tell you why. When the Muslim Brotherhood won the election in Egypt many years ago, 
I was in a radio show with Osama Dakdok, if you know him. And Osama was upset. He's an Egyptian, so he was sad for where he's coming from. Uh, I mean, what happened? The uh, Muslim Brotherhood took over. I said to him, actually, this is a good news. He said, why? He said, the best way to show Muslims that Islam is a stupid cult is to make them under Islamic government. As long as there is no Islamic government, they will not really see the real face of Islam. Because Muslims, when they are not in the government, they can make, give you a speeches about Islam is the way of solution, the way of life, brother. If we have Islamic government, things will be different, brother. Now, okay, now they are Islamic government. Let us see what they do. And I told him, you will see. You will see. In less than a year, 30 million Egyptians, they strike in the street because they saw that the Muslim Brotherhood is the most corrupt party Egypt ever witnessed. Before they thought, okay, you know what, maybe because those people are not Islamists, they are corrupt. Maybe this, this president, he is a Muslim by name. This is why the country is not going to the right direction. So let us vote for the Muslim Brotherhood. They are they have long beard, they praise Allah, they are believers, they have the black spot in their forehead because they bow down to Allah a lot. So let us give them the chance. And when they give them the chance, they witness firsthand how the country was collapsing. And Erdogan is the same. Since Erdogan he took Turkey. Look at the currency of Turkey. I don't know how many of you are Turkish. You go to the market to buy a chicken. In the morning, the price, let us say, 5,000. Afternoon, it is 10,000. This is how life in Turkey is. Trump, if he make a tweet, just a tweet, imagine how, how weak this country is. To the point, if a guy, his name is a Trump, sitting in his ass in the White House, he make a tweet against Turkey. The currency immediately lose between 20 to 30 percent of its value a tweet so what if a trump he made five a tweet a day if you don't believe me search for it this guy a uh, uh, trump is very smart uh I'm looking for the news. Look at this. Turkey currency. I just type, you know, Turkey currency, uh, uh, Trump tweet. Turkey currency takes 20% dive to fresh all time low after Trump tweet. Tweet. This is how bad the country situation is. To the point a foreign man from foreign country, he make a tweet and you lose 20% of the value of your money by a tweet. What if a Trump decide to make a tweet every morning? No, no, I will not take a call, guys, because uh, 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 I got things to do. Same time, I will. Tr I'm trying to avoid really not to take calls from Muslims unless they are scholars. If there is a Muslim, he is a scholar. I will talk to him. You know, I'm I'm done with Muslim kids. And they just make me shout, and you know, there's no point. Yeah, but we are talking here about how how a country can be destroyed by a tweet. I mean, how powerful Erdogan is, the one who is threatening the whole world. If you, if you hear Erdogan, you think this guy is controlling an empire and he is the most powerful man on earth. When his economy can be collapsed overnight by a tweet. Well, uh, it's good for him because uh, Trump, you know, he is he is not favored by most of the media and they hate him. So this guy, he established his own media. Good for him. Why not? Smart move. So now if you want to learn what a Trump you want to say, you go to Trump. You do not need CNN. Good for him. Smart. Very smart move. But I mean, think about it. If you have a solid... 
uh, economy I mean who care of a guy he make a tweet I mean yes he is the president of USA but we knew all why because Turkish economy is extremely extremely weak it's like there's it's like a balloon it's empty there's many companies they build houses in Turkey and now they are ghost towns nobody buying the houses even even Erdogan he offers citizenship if you spend I think uh, I don't know 20,000 if you buy something for 20,000 he offer you citizenship Buruj Al Babas 20 200 million house in development located near whatever it's a ghost town and they make it look as if it is like Disneyland nobody have money it is dead and this is by the way it is a religious ghost town this is why if you go to Turkey these days you are pretty much to be wrapped kidnapped and be missing Dar al Islam and Dar al Harb. Maybe next time, uh, Ahmad, uh, oh, sorry, Ak 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 Aknad, uh, we can talk about the, the, the land of peace and the land of war in Islam. No problem. So they build a religious uh, city. Let us see the images of the city. I became interested. I want to buy. Yeah. You see how they make it look like a Disneyland. Yeah, you think this is like a Disneyland, really? And actually, it looked really stupid. I mean, look at the city. Look at this town. Who in the world want to live here? What kind of houses those houses is? It's like Hori Booter houses. I mean, literally, it's like a horror movie. It's like a witch houses. Who is going to buy there? And this is supposedly a religious city. Religious. What what is missing to see? Her reporter flying in the top of his broom. Look at this. It looked like the KKK hats. And what is that? How silly! How stupid to have such a city. It's ugly, it's disgusting, it, it doesn't make sense. I mean, the designer obviously have a mental issue. Look at this. What is that? I mean, and they were uh, making commercial about it. This is a religious city, this is a Muslim city, Allahu Akbar. All people who live there, they are very strict religious. Uh, and not, because, this is why nobody wanna buy there. What do you mean no screen? No, my screen is off. I was on. All black? Oh, oh okay. Hold on, hold on. I think uh, my connection is getting weak. Mm, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on. Let me see what I can do. Give me a second, please. Yeah. Okay, what about now? Is it working now? Let us see now. Yeah, I would increase my internet speed. Look like it's not really doing good. So look at this. I mean, I don't know. I'm going to buy a house there.
and I will open my camera and I will say to you Shen Kabut Hashtatut I am in the witch town of Allah here is all the genies how creepy this town is this is the most creepy town ever you can imagine And what is that tower? I mean, what the, what the, what the purpose of that tower supposedly? Somebody tell me. <laughs> anyway, let it go. Let it go. Yeah. Actually, I you know, uh, I believe the reason for Erdogan one day to be kicked out of Turkey and even to be jailed is not only to be his corruption it is how much he destroyed turkey when it's come to economy you see when erdogan in the beginning he did some smart move he uh, he visited syria he have a good relationship with the president they opened the borders for him the import and the export was going crazy for turkey making great money where Turkey opened the gate of Syria all to all over you, you know, Middle Eastern countries like Saudi Arabia, Jordan, even Israel. And then he changed his mind because he's a Muslim Brotherhood. He said to himself, let us support the Muslim Brotherhood and they take the president and then we will expand our land and we will make Syria as a territory of Turkey. And then we will make the Muslim Brotherhood take over Jordan and we will make Jordan a Muslim Brotherhood territory, part of Turkey. And Egypt won the election by Muslim Brotherhood at that time. So he said to himself, oh, oh, we can now connect Turkey all the way to Egypt and all this land will become the caliphate land of the Muslim Brotherhood. And he wanted to be the caliphate. It was a dream. And then the Russian, they screwed him up. And then the Saudi, they put more nails in his bum. And then the Emirati, they give him more screws. And since then, the country is collapsing. So right now, the one who is fighting the Turkish economy is specifically the Turkish, sorry, the, the Saudi, the Emirati, and Bahrain, and Egypt. And, you know, Erdogan is not a trustworthy for European too. They knew he is a gang person. Anyway, guys, I want to say thank you for all those who came here and... Uh, Thank you again for those who make a donation and for those who say God bless you and I don't see you and those who ask me question I don't read your question please forgive me sometimes it's very hard to read all the questions uh, American Kurdistan Kurdish Syrian state American Kurdish Syrian state created no they will not allow that to happen you see the problem is the Kurdish people they did not understand the game until now the Kurdish they trusted the American and American are not and I'm talking about government American government are not a trustworthy government why because they don't do take friends they do business and a person who have a mentality of business he's just a business nothing personal nothing personal so when the American they are done in Syria, they will dump the Kurdish and the Kurdish will be left alone, either to be eaten alive by the Syrian government or by Erdogan. Count my words. The Kurdish, they made a mistake. They did not take this, the Russian as a friend. Russian, they don't let you alone. The Russian, they stand with the Assad as a friend for eight years, fighting with him. They send their army there. They send more than 80 airplanes and they killed hundreds of thousands actually of terrorists this is what the Russian do you cannot trust Western government to be your friends because they have business mentality at the end of the day all is about money nothing personal no religion involved no ethic is involved nothing it's just a business today we need you so what what America do do you know something is called a, a friend with benefit you know what does that mean right friend with benefit this is what they do they friend you with benefit and i'm talking sadly about the country i live in this is how it is you know they can dump you overnight this is what they did with the president of egypt 
Hosni Mubarak was a friend to USA for more than 30 years overnight Obama dumped him like it like if he is a piece of garbage overnight because Obama is a Muslim Brotherhood at the end of the day and he wanted to see an Islamic party his party taking over Egypt but even if it's not Obama it's going to be the same they will dump him the same as America they dump the king of Iran why we have this regime Islamic regime in Iran most people do not know the truth that it was America who dumped the king they left him alone the king was their best friend and overnight they dump him the Russian they do do they don't do that the Russian you are their friends they will they will go to war with you and this is why the Assad he was a smart even though he's a dictator he is a criminal whatever you want to call it but he was a smart him and his family they have a friend they can trust. Uh, when I, I can expect me translating the Quran, my friend, when I stop doing broadcasting. <laughs> Do you see how many hours it's taking from my from my day? Uh, yeah, I hope I hope you know I'm working it. But soon we will have our my book which is in Spanish will be published this is very good news I'm really happy excited to see that the Spanish book is going to be out soon uh, because the Muslims uh, they are targeting Spanish people big deal and uh, uh, I'm really grateful for the person who did the translation voluntarily I did not pay a penny for it as all my other translations you see the Lord yes I am poor yes I you know like I mean but always I see that the Lord always provide me with amazing people people who I can trust and look how how great they are voluntarily all those who translated my books the Dutch one the German one the French one the Swedish one the the Spanish I mean you name it they did not take a penny it's amazing how the Lord he can make people work for his glory uh, so I really appreciate those people and the same as I appreciate all of you appreciate your support and if not the help of those people I will not be able to do what I am doing today actually I will not be able to even you see I like I spend maybe I don't know how many of you know me for how long uh, but I am fighting Islam in the internet since the first day I have connection to the internet the first day ever I have connection to the internet, it was the first day I start exposing Islam. I remember, and the, if you go and see, let me see if I can find you a video, just to show you how I used to make videos before. I used to use a, a camera, a camcorder. I'm trying to find the video um, there's a video made by the Iranian TV um, about uh, the most enemy to Allah uh, here we go okay this is this is an old video of mine hello everyone from this is published in memory TV if you look with me here you will see the screen do you see how the screen is the screen is blue right why it's blue because simply I was using a camcorder I hold the camera in my hand imagine and then I speak and uh, uh, the camera is recording and then I have to process the file it take forever computers in the old days are very slow internet is horrible the file is so big I mean you name it Oh, you can see the clear screen. Sorry, I apologize. Hold on. Um, yeah, if you if you uh, if you search here, they are. I used to have a channel. It's called Investigate Islam, and you know, always when I have like uh, 70, 80 thousand, I lose my channel as usual. This is why by now I should have like I should have really millions of subscribers. So, uh, Investigate Islam featured 
in or Iranian TV the Iranian TV they were making a program and here you see this is the Iranian TV uh, memory TV clips used by Iranian TV channel 2 Iran November 5 uh, 2007 and I learned about it long after. I mean, I, I did not learn about it in 2007, but somebody saw it and they say, hey, your video is in the Iranian TV. So look how I used to make the videos at that time. Uh, you know, very uh, hardly you can read the text. I can, I think you can tell, right? Hardly you can read, you can, you can see the text. And in this program, they were talking about the most enemy to Allah, the most enemy to Islam. The same exactly what we read just a few days ago in the in the Indonesian newspaper uh, the most enemy to Allah is a Christian press right yeah so uh, I did a lot of work and I'm really happy for what I did because Tens of thousands of Muslims left Islam because of my videos. And I am not exaggerating. I confirm that to you. Uh, yeah, well, you know, if you, uh, you know, before, before I go on YouTube, actually the one who made me come to YouTube is the Muslims. The Muslims. The Muslims is the one who made me come everywhere. It, it was the Muslims who made me make a book. You believe it or not? Uh, uh, before I used to debate Muslims in uh, in a program called the Hear Me. Very old program for chat. And then the Muslims, they challenged me to come to a program. It's called Paltok. And then I went to Paltok and I made thousands and thousands of debates in Paltok. Do you want to hear one of them? And by the way, I used to stay, like you see this video here is eight hours. Do you see it, eight hours? Okay, eight hours is the limit of YouTube. But honest to my Lord, sometime I stay in Paltok 12 hours, 13 hours, actually once, you believe it or not I opened pal talk in a Friday afternoon I went to work Monday morning without the closing pal talk don't tell me how I can do it the Lord he knew <laughs> I went I, I came from work Friday Friday I came from work I took a shower I ate, I opened Paltok. But at that time, things was easier for me. I will tell you why. I was living in a small studio. So the kitchen is just next to my table. You know, I, like, I want to eat something, I can grab it from the counter. You know, I don't need, need to move anywhere. <laughs> but I was really happy at that time because when I come to Paltok, the Muslim, they used to have like, oh, today I just want to convert to Islam. In less than six months, all those who converted to Islam, they left Islam in my chat room. And then after after that, a disaster started happening for, for Islamic Islamic uh, uh, chat rooms. They shrink, they die, nobody listened to them, nobody believed them, and Muslims start leaving Islam left and right, to the point even admins in chat rooms, they left Islam. There is a guy, uh, he, his name, he's, a, he's a doctor, I forgot what, what his name. Three years he opened a chat room. The name of the room, Christian Prince Exposed, something like that. Three years every day he attacked me. The whole chat room is about just a Christian Prince. And then one day he came to the chat room, my chat room, and he said, this guy is telling the truth and I am out of Islam. First, I thought he is being sarcastic because everybody knows that this guy, he hit me to death. So people, they said to me, ask him to come to the mic. Let's see what he's, you know, maybe he is, maybe he mean it. But I could not believe it. A guy, he hate me very much. He took the mic and he said, Islam is the biggest lie. Everything he said, I check it out. It's true. Everything he said is true. Nothing there is not.
so we have a long journey my friend maybe you know me in YouTube maybe today maybe yesterday maybe a year before maybe five years ago maybe ten years ago still this is you know nothing yet about what we did we did a lot and uh, you know now if you are a Christian child and you watch my videos you can debate any Muslim now no matter who is this Muslim what do you think about the Quran of Osama uh, that talk translated generate I, 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 I it's very good translation actually yeah Osama that talk Osama that is a very good man uh, you can trust uh, you know uh, his work uh, uh, but me I'm going to make the translation made in different way and people will notice what I will do but yes Osama Daktok is a trustworthy person he's very good he's very uh, very decent and he is uh, he's very brave too you know very brave I respect him yeah um, Are you sure about what? About Osama? Yes, absolutely, I'm sure. And I know him in person too. He's a wonderful person. First time Osama, he saw me, he looked at me, he was wondering, who is this guy? You know, I came to him, he was in a church, he wanted to make a speech. And I told the lady outside, uh, where well, I can see Osama. And then she said, okay, follow me. And she was looking at me, maybe he's a terrorist because I look like a terrorist. I look like a really a very, very scary terrorist. So I think she was worried a little bit. And then I went and he was in the office and I went in and Osama, he looked at me and he was, I did not say anything yet. He was looking at me like, who is this guy? And then I spoke, I said, hey, Osama. He said, oh, no way. This is a this is a Christian prince. <laughs> you know, if I don't speak, there is no way you will know. But when I spoke right away, he noticed that this is me. He said, "I could not believe it that you look like this." And now you know why I'm still not married. So you get an idea, don't you? <laughs> I scared the hell of him. So uh, God is good. <clears throat> uh, So today we covered many issues and um, I think we are done for today so let us leave something for tomorrow uh, don't forget please if you like uh, if you like our videos to download them I made a video yesterday actually a few hours ago uh, uh, about uh, 350 people converting to Islam search for the title and you will find the title uh, it's not in my page no more and there's a video about Muhammad being a, a white supremacist. Please look for the video and download it too and share it with your friends. Uh, so I want to say thank you for all of you to be to be with us tonight and to support me and to support what we do. And uh, God is good and always put your trust in the Lord. He always provide what you cannot make by yourself. You see, we can depend on ourselves it's good to to be uh, God he don't like people who just depend in the prayer right he says work and I will work with you so we are people who work and the Lord he will work with us uh, but the important about your work is not to be for your own glory work and the Lord will give you the Lord will provide you the Lord will be with you don't think about you know that the, the Messiah he spoke about look at the birds how they survive how beautiful that example is so uh, you can be a person who provide work and the more your work is provided for others not for your sake first then is going to come for your sake at the end you will get the benefit even if you think you are just doing you know I mean a charity work uh, maybe I'm just helping somebody I and mean, there's no there's no benefit for me trust me there is a benefit for you and the benefit will come to you sooner or later and the best benefit I see in my life that the Lord always send in front of me the best people ever you can meet wonderful people loving 
caring and always they care for help and I really appreciate them and I appreciate the Lord sending those people in my way and the you know as we say always God is good and the good come to the good so let us end it with th this for today may the Lord bless you all and enter we see you soon again Christ is Lord Islam is false and thank you very much for being here take care bye-bye